In this video, I'm going to walk through the assembly and wiring of this X-Pro Heli XP2 quadcopter. You can see I mounted these front arms, they're red, with four hex screws, so two on each side. And you do that with both arms, and that's pretty much it for the top part of the frame. And I say that's it because the rear arms, the two black ones, come pre-assembled. Now you'll notice these have Phillips screws while the front have hex, so I'm not sure why the difference, but uh, that being said, the top part of the frame is assembled. Now we'll walk through installing the motors and electronics. We're going to assemble our motors and ESCs. I'm going to go ahead and feed the motor wires down here. Now you'll notice a nice rubber gasket, which is good so you don't want those wires rubbing up against that metal frame. We'll be able to mount each of the motors like that. So we'll do all four of these motors on each arm, and then we'll attach our ESCs. And for each motor, we have our mounting hardware four screws to attach to the frame, our prop attachment, and then our screws to mount that to the top of the motor. All four motors are mounted and we're looking at the bottom of the arm, so motor leads come through, attached to our ESC, so you run through the arm of the frame and set to the center of the frame, and we're velcroed, and that's done for all four motors on the frame. You see these leads are a little bit loose, but we want to get our motor rotation direction in the right place. There's a chance we might need to switch these to reverse the direction. I've seen some guys do a braid of the wire. Looks pretty cool. I might do that or maybe just zip tie it down. Okay, next up we're going to use our wiring harness and connect each of the ESCs. Wiring harness is now attached to all four of our ESCs. Okay, let's run a quick power check. So everything sounds good. No smoke or explosion, so we'll continue. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is calibrate our ESCs and set up our motor rotation. I generally like to do those together to save a little time. Before we can do that, we need to go ahead and bind our transmitter and our receiver together. So I have the ESC connected to channel three, which will be our throttle and the bind plug in place. So let's go ahead and bind them together. First thing I'll do is I'll press the bind button on the back of the Turna G9X. And then I'll turn it on. And then you'll see what was a flashing LED is now constant. So we have a bind. I'm gonna go ahead and power down. Remove our bind plug. Turn off our transmitter. Okay, now with our bind plug removed, I'm gonna turn on the transmitter. Power up the system and we should see a constant. And now you'll notice that our bind is now constant. And we have the ESC hooked up to the throttle channel, but you'll notice there's no throttle. So what happens normally, we need to go in the menu and configure. I normally like to fly with acro. So I'm gonna do that. And then for our sticks, I think it defaults to mode one. So I'm gonna change that to mode two. You can hear now the ESC is armed. Throttle reverse, I'm gonna hit exit because I don't want to throttle reverse. Now let me just go ahead and exit again and give it a little throttle. Okay, so that's good. Now let's go ahead and calibrate this ESC. And I'll calibrate these ESCs based on motor number. X-Pro Heli sends you a page out of the NASA manual and you'll notice M1, M2, M3, and M4. And we'll get our rotation set up for each as we calibrate the ESC. I'm just going to do the demonstration for this first motor and you obviously know you need to do it for the other three. So once again, we're going to go into channel three. That's going to be our throttle channel and that's what we'll use to calibrate. With motor one ESC connected, I'm going to go ahead and give full throttle. I'm going to turn on my transmitter. Now we don't have power to the quad yet, but I'm going to go ahead and give, give it power now. So we'll connect the battery. And hear a little beep sequence. Now we're calibrated and armed. Now I've learned the hard way not to keep your props on the bench when you're doing testing or doing any sort of configuration. Now always when I test my motor direction, I use a piece of scotch tape as you can probably see right here. And we want motor one to spin counterclockwise. So let's test it. I'm gonna give it a little bit of throttle. And you can, I can just feel that it's spinning clockwise. So I'm gonna bring that down. 
And with my transmitter off and the quad power down, I'm just going to go ahead and switch two of these three ESC leads. Okay, we're powered back up. Now keep in mind the ESC calibration is done, so you notice I powered up with the throttle down and I'm gonna go ahead and spin it. Now I can tell that it's spinning counterclockwise, which is the direction that we want for motor one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this process for the other three ESCs and motors, and then we'll move on to wiring up the NASA. Now, what I like to do, I've done a lot of videos that show different transmitter switches for different flight modes, but uh, just to keep the build simple and to get Kevin in the air, we're not going to enable the U port. We're just going to have our four channels and fly in GPS attitude mode. So pretty simple, channel one to aileron, channel two to elevator, channel three to throttle, and channel four to rudder. Now we'll take the NASA PMU, and we'll go ahead and plug that into the EXP port on the NASA. Okay, so our one end goes to EXP on the NASA and the GPS. And they make this incredibly easy to wire up, so plug that in, and we'll wire up the NASA LED which is also uh, the programming port for updating the firmware and configuring your NASA. And you'll see a little cross port across the top called a LED. Get that plugged in. There are quite a few components, but you have your receiver wired into your NASA, your GPS into your PMU, which in turn goes into your NASA, and then your NASA LED and programming port uh, into the other side of the NASA. Okay, we have our NASA wired up to our ESCs, and that's wired up in the order of M1, M2, M3, M4. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, and then we're going to get everything mounted. Let me show you this mounting bracket that comes with the XP2. So it's just sticky on one side, the NASA is stuck to the mounting bracket, and then it's just going to sit in here and mount to these nylon posts. Now. You can see this arrow that points to the front. We know the front of our XP2 where the red arms are, so we're going to mount this in there just like that with it facing forward. Our nozzle is mounted into place. That thing is not going to go anywhere, so that's nice and sturdy. I have the Turnigy receiver velcroed to one of these. There's these different velcro pads on each arm, so uh, that's actually, a, as you guys probably know, this 9X receiver is quite big, so could definitely scale that down with a smaller receiver, but it uh, should work for now. Now, one thing I failed to mention earlier when wiring is that this NASA PMU, you have this servo connector come out, and that needs to go to your X3 port on your NASA, so you can see I have it wired in there. PMU has some Velcro, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it to the bottom of this mounting bracket. So on the other end of this PMU, there is inputs for a 2S to up to a 6S battery. Now you can see here that I have a female JST connector and the wiring harness that we use to get power from the LiPo is also a female. They're both female JSTs so that's not going to work. So uh, you can tell that they soldered and heat shrink this at the factory and I believe they put the wrong connector on there. So that's no bueno. Uh, they do provide a JST wiring harness that I could run off of the main harness and then split my connections out. So if you have FPV or other gear that you could power that stuff. But we're not going to be doing that with this build. We just need to get power and so what I'm going to have to do is desolder these and solder a male connector so that we can get power. Okay, so I've replaced the JST connector on the PMU with a male end. So I'm going to take the female from the wiring harness and we'll go ahead and connect these two. Okay, there's a lot going on in here, but I'm going to take this, I took this uh, rubber grommet out here and I'm going to run our banana plug and wiring harness and we'll run that out and put it right here. Okay, next thing we'll do, we have the NASA LED with the programming port. I'm just going to stick it down to this Velcro area right there. So that'll be accessible whenever we need it. We can just pull it off and then program. Okay, lastly for our wiring, I'm gonna go ahead and run the GPS through the side of the frame and we're gonna plug it into our PMU. 
See, we got a lot going on in there, but let me go ahead and flip it over. And we're gonna just set it on top of the landing gear for the time being. Now I have seen some guys mount their unit directly to the frame, just like that. You got your sticky tape, but I'm going to use this stand just because you want to keep this receiver as far away from your ESCs and other electronics as possible. This seems to be really the best place to mount it for this frame. And if Kevin decides he wants to mount it elsewhere, we can always pull this off and put it in one of the corners. Then I'll mount the actual receiver right here and you want this, you see this arrow pointed directly to the front. And here's a look at our setup so far. Now, next I'm gonna go ahead and mount the top part of the frame to the landing gear with this, it's called the radial mount set from Cobra. So we'll use these to mount the two together. You see it comes with four pads and you should just be able to tear those apart. And then there's a little bit of tape on each side that you need to remove. Okay, so I'm gonna apply some super glue. Now this is just regular plain old house super glue as recommended by the X-Pro Heli guys. So I figure they're the experts. So we'll take their recommendation. Go ahead and put that right on and you wanna obviously get it centered. We'll do the other sides and then we'll let it dry for a few minutes. Our super glue is dried. So what I'm gonna do is remove the plastic from each one of these pads and then we're going to put a little super glue on each make sure it's nice and covered and then we'll put our landing gear on remember this is the back camera mount goes in the front and then our assembly will be complete our landing gear is mounted and now it's drying now just a couple tips when you put the super glue on those pads you need to be quick as you guys know super glue generally dries pretty quick so get that on there get it lined up and then I used two of your batteries or something to weight it down. So now we'll let this dry. Our landing gear is mounted, have props on. And one thing that I noticed, I took these off, these foam pads off during the build. I didn't know really what they were for. After doing some reading, apparently they're used to help reduce vibrations even further. So GoPro will be there. Those will do the vibration dampening as well as our foam rubber pads. So that covers it for the assembly and wiring. And in the next video, I will walk through the NASA configuration. Then we should be ready to take it for a maiden flight. So please post any questions or comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.